Oh, hey, welcome to my house tour. You wanna wake up or? Okay. Welcome back to Laugh Cry DIY. It is your girl, Katie. And for months and months and months, you little freaks have been asking for a home tour without a warrant. And today I am finally giving it to you. We're gonna tour my house bit by bit, project by project, thrifted item by thrifted item, and walk you through my very colorful, very patternful maximalist apartment, which someone once described as horrific. So I live here with my boyfriend and my sweet baby angel baguette. And here we are standing in my grand foyer where I often greet dignitaries and diplomats of all sorts. Okay, bye. And in this grand entryway, you will find the first piece of furniture that I ever dumpster dived, I guess. I found this in a dumpster in 2004 and it is a beautiful, stunning, authentic mid-century coffee table. I have brought it to every home I've ever lived in. It's been a coffee table, an end table, a nightstand. And one of my favorite things about it is that it actually looks like a guitar pick, which perfectly complements the vibe of what I call the record lounge. So I basically designed this whole section for my boyfriend who is a big vinyl collector. He loves listening to music. He likes art and memorabilia. And I basically wanted to create like a station that was like part record listening lounge, part mini bar. And you may recognize this cabinet from the first video I ever posted on my channel. When I envisioned this space, I wanted to find the right cabinet but most cabinet storage is way too small to hold a 12 inch record. And usually record listening cabinet credenzas are way too short. So these were just white boring cubes and I hand cut out these detail insets for eight hours and it almost killed me. Painted it black, added the cane hardware, added the legs. And that way when you stand next to it, it hits at your hip and you don't have to reach over to swap records. And I also really like the cane because it kind of looks like old 70s speakers. And most importantly, it is one of Baguette's favorite scratch spots. And my favorite thing is these record display racks. Makes it feel like a record store, super convenient to swap stuff in and out of. And if you haven't seen it before, I sure as hell did custom design an album cover in which I turned my cat into a 60s girl group. And as happens when you live somewhere, the record lounge is spreading. I custom built this console table to run the length of the sofa. And I now call it the record store because it has just become more piles of vinyl. But you know what? Not mad about it. This is a rattan lamp from Ikea. Renter friendly, plugs in, very easy, very fun, and very large scale. It's 24 inches. And you know what I said? Get two. Boom. By the way, this is a very low light corner. And I find that if you use peacock feathers instead of a live plant, it gives the effect of some sort of flora without uh, having to water it. I also made these little tombstone bookends for Halloween as a fun little dumb thing. And my boyfriend loved them so much because he said they reminded him of the band The Cramps. And so they live here full time now. And I am currently on the hunt for a perfect miniature bottle of tequila to add to both sides. And then because we already had the tombstone and we have like horror books and this became a graveyard slowly, I then wanted to add my little crypt. So this is a really dope container that I thrifted and inside is my beautiful coffin candle. And I collect vintage matchbooks and I found this one which is like a mini leather spell book. So that stays there for, you know, daily spells. Fun fact, when I moved into this apartment, I actually sold like half of my furniture and rebought it in different proportions. Cause I used to have a much larger bar cart, but it wouldn't fit. I just wanted this little rolling guy and we have a variety of bottles, but I do especially love this one. This bottle is empty, but it is like a piece of grand art. It is so embellished. And my favorite part is that it even has a locket and a little skull in it. So cool. Now, when you live in an apartment, you have to make the most of all your space. So although we have a sizable one bedroom and there are plenty of places to work, I did, of course, want to make a very special place for myself. My closet office. We got a cozy little rug, cute little velvet chair. This is the world's tiniest office, but it is adorable. All jungle wallpaper. 
Some very fun DIYs such as this waste basket pendant, another coffin candle, this beautiful cauldron candle. This is a framed vintage scarf from my friend's grandmother. And best of all, my friend Chelsea, shout out to Chelsea who's been on the channel. She got me uh, some vintage in sync notebooks. And as we all know, Gianni Versace once said, if you don't have vintage in sync notebooks in your office, then you don't have an office. Chelsea also made me these amazing moment of joy, moment of hell candles which if you're a channel watcher, you know is uh, the mantra of our show. Okay, let's close this before all my secrets escape. So welcome to my very brightly backlit living room. And this living room is like many rentals. There's some kind of funky stuff in it. Specifically, this giant closet, which I like to call the movie theater. It is a very weird alcove. It was a closet. It had a dividing shelf. So I decided to make it a full faux fireplace. And as you can see, there's nothing Baguette loves more than curling up next to a fire. And this poof is something that I have had for years. I think I've recovered it three times in three separate fabrics. And I did cover it with this leopard velvet because she is clearly a queen of the jungle. You wanna wake up or? Okay. Obviously I am a big thrift store girl and one thing I'm very into lately is buying things and making them planters when they are not planters. Such as my new favorite find, which is this brocade like Chinese takeout box. Where did it come from? What did it hold? We'll never know. I also really love this pot with the beaded handles. Um, I made this from dollar store supplies and it might just be one of my favorite little dollar DIYs of all time. So one of my favorite things about my home is my coral pink sofa, which is an Ikea sofa that I bought a slip cover for and I custom dyed to be coral pink in my own bathtub. And I almost died of poisoning while doing it. And because I have such a bright feminine sofa, I wanted to counteract that and incorporate some more masculine colors. Hence we went with this really beautiful kind of like royal peacock blue. And also to match my beautiful peacock rug which actually had a gray background and I custom painted this sunset in. I am also a big fan of using like dinnerware as trays and I love that this is like a two tier little like serving platter with a perfect middle spot to put all burning candles. I can never decide if I wanna be like boho or traditional or grand Victorian or Hollywood Regency or full glam. So my house is a mix of a ton of different materials but I do especially love rattan. I thrifted this little guy for like $10 a few years back I love him so much and he's the perfect stand for my incredible disco ball plant stand. So I found these magnet tiles at a thrift store and I decided to build them into a disco ball stage for my disco ball planter, which I also made from the dollar store. And I added these lights, which can go on and off. And the best part is that for exactly two minutes a day, the light hits this and makes the whole room a disco ball. Like I said, my house makes no sense. I have kitschy disco ball floor next to glamorous velvet chairs next to punk rock art. And that is called feminism. And when people ask me, why is your couch in such good shape and there's no scratching on it? And it is because sweet baby Angel Baguette is an angel and she only scratches on her cactus, which is pretty freaking adorable. Now, of course, because I cannot live with blank walls, this is actually not paint, this is thin washi tape, which I taped all over the walls in a freehand pattern. Is it a lot? Yes, uh, guess what, so am I. And here we have the most incredible piece of furniture I've ever found. This incredible étagère, a French word for like a glass display case, is a Hollywood Regency pagoda style rattan shelf. When I first saw a pagoda style shelf, I was obsessed. I knew I needed one immediately. Unfortunately, they tend to be upwards of $1,000. And then I was on Facebook Marketplace and I saw a girl out in the desert selling this for $300. So for my birthday, my boyfriend and I went to the desert, rented a van, brought it back, and it is absolutely the most stunning piece that I own and will always own. Fun fact, I did learn that like pagoda roofs are shaped that way to ward off evil spirits because they're meant to like slide off the curves. Unfortunately, Baguette is the evil spirit that haunts this bookcase and she will crawl to the top like a psychopath. I do constantly change what's on this shelf, as we all do. Um, but right now I have a few of my favorite things. This is an old vintage globe. Uh, it's a lamp. You can barely see it, but it's very cool and vibey, I think. I also have my clamshell with a pearl and a candle in it, um, which is also something that I made from a bunch of stuff I thrifted. Check that video out too. 
Now, I don't know about you, but there is a very humiliating phenomenon that happens, which is when you go to the thrift store and you find like an incredible vintage uh, set of candelabras, and then you find out that they're actually Target. And I have not read any of the books, but the color scheme was so cool, I had to buy them all. And here we have my collection of antiques. I collect vintage matchbooks. Um, I especially love to collect feature matches, which are matches that have really cool designs on them, including my favorite ones of all, which are actually uh, women's fishnet legs. I collect vintage compacts. By the way, vintage makeup is very interesting because it kind of reflects how society felt about women or makeup at the time. So like back in the 20s, you didn't want anyone to know, especially your mom, that you had any sort of makeup on you. So you'd have a case like this, which looks entirely innocuous. You have no idea what it is, but it's actually, actually a flip up powder and you have a secret compartment for your incredible rouge. Look how cool this one is. It actually has a little clock in it. You would have your little powder there and the world's cutest little tiny adorable blush. Then you move into the 50s where makeup is okay and you actually wanna flaunt your makeup a little bit like status symbols. So you'd have a more opulent or more obviously designed powder case. What was that? No one cares about the history of makeup? Cool. And in this corner, we have one of my favorite things, which is Baguette's little cat shelves. All cats are either like bush dwellers or tree dwellers. She loves to climb as high as she can. So we gave her this little perch and she will sit up here and sort of just judge everybody. And of course I wanted her to be cozy. So I did line the shelves with the same leopard velvet that is on her poof. Show everybody how you use your shelves. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on to the hallway. My boyfriend's awesome sister, shout out Rocio, gave us this portrait for Christmas and when we opened it, she said, I think it might be a little big. And now I would like to welcome you to my bathroom of lies. Okay, but like, how do I film in here? <laughs> So we moved into this apartment quickly and one of those things we didn't realize was that this bathroom does not have a window. What a nightmare. So when we moved in, this was totally blank and I was like, it doesn't have a window. I have to do as much as possible to make this a fun bathroom. So I added tile stickers, added my fun little scalloped rug, turned the walls pink. And my favorite hack is that I contact papered the cabinets green. And if you have like factory finished laminated cabinets, there's no reason not to contact paper them. Don't do it if you have painted wood cabinets, it will peel off the paint. I also swapped out the hardware. Full disclosure, it's been like almost three years. It's a little dinged up. I could have repapered it for you, I didn't. And my most favorite decorative object in this bathroom is my brass giraffe toilet paper holder. I mean, you're gonna have a toilet paper holder. Why not have a brass giraffe? Come on. By the way, do you guys know this hack? Do you wanna be fancy toilet paper roll? A little damp, uh, stamp it, stays. Um, I also compulsively am trying to find the right shower curtain. We have this fun little modern one, but the big thing I wanted in a shower curtain, I don't know why, I really wanted tassels on the bottom. And guess what? I got them. And guess what? My cat does not care at all. And now we are making our way to my beautiful pink tropical dining room. I also did a makeover episode on this. Um, because this is an open floor plan, I really wanted to like define the space and I just love a big, bold moment. So when I saw this wall mural online, I said, this must be mine. And I wanted to add some luxury and glamor, so we went with our beautiful blue velvet chairs. And because this is not enough, I had to add actual throw pillows. Because if you don't have throw pillows at your dining table, what is the point of life? And I do love this basket so much. It is my junk basket. It does live here full time because it is perfect storage for chargers and Cobras. All right, let's check out the kitchen. Welcome to my mostly unexciting kitchen. Um, one thing I do love about many LA apartments is that they often do have a lot of cute features. I absolutely love my green tile. And some of you have asked me where these beautiful crystal cut seafoam green glass knobs are from. And I have to tell you, they came with the place. But the best thing I did in this room was add the floors. So the original tile is brown linoleum. So I did add this peel and stick barbershop floor. Pro, it looks super cute, super fits with the theme. Con, 
The white part gets dirty a lot and that's very annoying, but it's still 100% improvement and I'm very glad that I did it. I did also cover the back windows in rainbow privacy film and it is fun that about twice a day rainbows shoot all over my microwave. And I will show you something that is life changing to me. Um, as a cat owner, we all hate litter boxes, but we all have to deal with them. And for me, the best thing I did was create a little kitty cabinet. I actually custom created this fake cabinet front with a swinging pet door. It's like securely lined. It doesn't smell. No one would ever know it's there, but it is her little private space. And as a cat owner, it is the best thing I've ever done. Now, although this kitchen is pretty minimal compared to the rest of the house, we do have to add a little dose of maximalism, especially for baguette. And so I have created uh, her own mini dining room. This is photos, she has little sconces, she has her little table and her little tablecloth. Oh, thank you. She does eat here and sometimes she will stare in her little mirror and just kind of wonder um, why on earth she ended up with me as an owner. Excuse me, ma'am. Well, you guys, that was today's mini home tour. Some things you've seen, some things you haven't. Thank you for coming along for today's home tour. Thank you for watching all the many projects I have created in my home. So like I said, if you wanna see any of the projects I've talked about, they will be linked below. It looks like this today, but you know we're gonna change it tomorrow. So if you wanna join me on that journey, like and subscribe. And until next time, I don't think my house is like that horrific. I don't know.